Hello. In this video, we talk about conditional expectation and law of total probability, in particular for situations in which we have two discrete random variables. So remember that if I have a discrete random variable x, the expected value of that random variable can be obtained by sigma xk px of xk for all xk's in the range of that random variable x. Now, if we have some additional information in, in particular if we know that the event a has occurred we can talk about conditional expectation of x given a the definition is very similar the only difference is that of course we need to replace the uh, probability mass function of x by the conditional probability mass function so that's expected value of x given uh, that event a has occurred for example, if uh, event a can be the event that the random variable y, another random variable y, uh, y is equal to yj. In that case, the conditional expectation, we can write it as sigma xk px given y xk given yj. Remember, this was the notation that we introduced uh, in the previous video for conditional probability mass function okay so to summarize conditional expectation of the random variable x uh, can be obtained using uh, this formula here uh, in general expected value of x given a is obtained by sigma uh, i just write xi here xi is px given a of xi and in particular we can look at the conditional expectation when we know the value of a random variable y. Before talking about an example, let's talk also talk about the law of total probability and law of total expectation. So remember that uh, we have seen law of total probability before. Basically, if I have a partition of the sample space, B1, B2, B3, and so on, uh, which means that these are disjoint sets and cover the entire sample space, uh, we can write the probability of any event A as the summation probability of A give and BI, which is equal to summation probability of A given BI times probability BI. So this is law of total probability. Now, these events BI uh, could be uh, events Y equals YI for a random variable uh, Y. So let's, let's say, uh, you know, the random variable Y can take values Y1, Y2, and so on so these are the possible values in the range of that random variable then we can say that the events y equals y1 y equals y2 and so on form a partition of the sample space so in that case we can replace these bi's with the events y equals yi in fact we have already used this thing when we were trying to find the marginal pmf of the random variable x from the joint pmf remember we said that we can write px at any point xi this is equal to summation of uh, over all possible yj's uh, px y of xi yj's which we can write also as px given y xi given yj's times py of yj's right this is just r writing this law of total probability here now we can write it uh, for a more general case in general if you are interested to find probability that the random variable x you know belongs to the set a for any set a you can write it uh, as the probability that uh, you know summation in terms of the con you know conditional probabilities px and a given that y equals yj times probability that y is equal to yj so this is again another just way of writing the law of total probability so that's one thing that i wanted to mention here however the interesting thing here is that we can extend the law of total probability to expectation which we call in fact law of total expectation so law of total expectation says that if i have a random variable x its expected value can be written as sum over all i's x e expected value of uh, x given bi times probability of bi where bi's form a partition of the sample space so in particular if i have another random variable then i can write expected value of x is equal to 
sum over all j's expected value of x given y is equal to yj times probability that y is equal to yj. So this is called law of total expectation. So let me, you know, summarize everything here in a clean format. Uh, so we said that law of total probability states that probability that x belongs to a can be written as this sum. And if I am interested in the expected value of x and I have a partition of the sample space, I can write it like this. In particular, as a special case of this, when the partitions are in this form, y equals yj, expected value of x can be written as this sum. So let's look at an example to practice all of these concepts. So here is the example. Suppose that the number of customers visiting a fast food restaurant in a given day is modeled by a Poisson random variable with parameter uh, lambda. So n is the number of customers, is Poisson with parameter lambda, where we assume that lambda is given. Assume that each customer purchases a drink with probability p independently from other customers and independently from the value of n. So if you look at a particular customer, that customer either purchases a drink or not. And the probability that the customer purchases a drink is just uh, this p, which again we assume it's given. So let x be the number of customers who purchase drinks. And our goal here is to find the expected value of x. So um, you can use what we discussed in this video to solve this problem. Uh, so I suggest that you solve the problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, let's look at the solution. So what do we know here? You know, let's say if I knew the value of n, right, if the number of customers, if I know it, then what can I say? Each customer purchases a drink with probability p. So it looks like each customer uh, tosses a coin such that that coin has probability of heads equal to p, and we are counting the total number of heads. So the total of number of customers who purchase drinks basically can be modeled as a binomial uh, random variable, right? So given that we know n, so given that we know n, like n equals n, then we know, uh, we can say x is binomially distributed with parameter n and p, right? So one way to write it, we usually write it like this. x given n equals n is binomial with parameter n and p. So in particular, uh, it's conditional PMF uh, is uh, obtained by uh, the probability that uh, x is equal to k. Remember, for, binom for binomial random variables, probability that uh, px of k was given by n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k for uh, values of k, 0, 1, up to n, right? Now, in this case, we have conditional uh, PMF, so the conditional PMF of x given n, and we usually write n also here, to say that this is conditional probability mass function. So condition that we know the value of n, we don't have any problem. We know that x is binomially distributed, and in fact, we know its mean. Remember, you know, we have already done this. The expected value of a binomial random variable is just np. So in this case, the expected value of x given n equals n is equal to np. So that's our first observation here, right? So we know the conditional expectation of x. However, we are interested in the expected value of x, not the conditional expected value. So what do we do? We use the law of total prob sorry, law of uh, total expectation. Because if you think about it, that's what it says here. If you know the conditional expected values, um, and are interested in the expected value, you can use the law of total expectation. So let's do this here. So in this case, I can write expected value of x is equal to sum over all possibilities of n, n equals 0 to infinity, right? n is Poisson, Poisson could be any 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Expected value of x given n equals n times probability that n is equal to n. Right. Again, I'm just using the law of total expectation. If you go back up, I am just applying this formula here, where you know this y is the random variable n. Okay. 
So then we say we already know this value. This is just NP. So the sum becomes N from 0 to infinity NP PN of N. Now note that the value P is a constant. So we can write it P sum N from 0 to infinity N PN of N. But what is this thing? Sum over all n's n times p n of n is this is just the expected value of n the random variable n and we know that the random variable n is Poisson with parameter lambda so its expected value is just equal to lambda so this becomes lambda times p so the answer to the question is lambda times p so we were able to use the uh, law of total expectation and conditional expected value to solve this problem okay thank you